Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and yes, I'm standing to the side just to show a, a better view of my size because I'm sure invariably when I talk about lifting, there will be some 150 pounds sucked up little kid who comes in and says, does this guy even lift? Which I read every single day on the internet. I don't look like I lift apparently. But that aside, as I'm sitting here drinking my morning coffee, I was reminded of something. I thought I'd make a quick video on it. And it's an interesting topic, and it's one of those, a bit of an enigma, it's something we debate about in raw powerlifting. Do heavy partial reps have a place for the raw lifter? And there's a lot of really good philosophy explaining why they may not. And, and that philosophy is true, and it's that they're not useful as a full range of motion strength builder. Heavy lockout work doesn't necessarily carry over to the bottom part of the lift, and as a raw lifter, the bottom is where you're always going to be weakest 99% of the time. And guys like Paul Carter over at Lift Run Bang, if you guys read his blog, he, he makes one hell of a good case for that. I tend to agree with him if that is why you're training it. You're not going to get stronger on your max bench or your max squat by doing partials. You're just not. It's not going to give you the same carryover that the full range of motion does. And the joint angle specificity and things should explain to you why. But guys like Jamie Lewis, again, writes a blog, Chaos and Pain who I've followed for many years. He loves heavy partials and he's been a world record holder in raw power lifting. And he has some unorthodox crazy ass outside of the box training. But uh, someone who's a little more, honestly what I would call, again, a very out of the box thinker. The guy comes up with some interesting concepts and they make sense, he explains them well. I've got to give him that. And that's a guy by the name of Brian Carroll. He is an elite level lifter. He also wrote 1020 Life and he has a blog also. And I think it's called 1020 Life also. I occasionally pop over and look at it. But he made an argument on Facebook because it's on my friends list. And I thought it was a hell of a point. And it's something that caught my attention. I briefly got involved in the conversation last week. And he had pointed out that things like partial squats, doing heavy squats off of pins for partial reps is a valuable tool for the raw lifter. Not because it's going to make you stronger, but because it can teach you better leverages and technique. And the point that he made, I thought was amazing because it's always pointed out, well, when you do partials, you're generally using a different bar path than you would on your raw lift or your one rep max. Therefore, it makes it useless. And the point that he brought up is, well, why? Why do you use a different bar path? When you're doing rack deadlifts or you're doing... Uh, rack squats for partials you're doing half squats out of the rack or even three-quarter squats or whatever you happen to be doing why do you change the bar path and the reason why is because you can get better leverages to move more weight more quickly from that dead stop by getting a more upright position by shifting the way that you do things versus the way you do on your raw lift and the point he made is that if you have better leverages and you need to be more upright and do these things differently to more quickly move that heavy weight from that sticking point, that dead stop, then why aren't you using that on your normal lift? And when he said that, yeah, a light clicked on for me, he's absolutely right. If halfway through the squat, there is a more optimal position than the position that you have been using to continue to accelerate the weight faster that you've already got started moving then why aren't you training yourself to use those same leverages and that same bar path on your normal squat if it is clearly superior? Why shouldn't you be trying to stay more upright on your squat? And what he pointed out, and, and I think it was uh, an amazing point that I've never actually considered. It. See guys, I can still learn stuff at 37. He pointed out that if used as an accessory, obviously you would never use partials as a primary training tool, but as an accessory, you can use those heavy partials to find your optimal leverages, to find the best bar path for yourself through every point in a lift. And you can use it to train that. And then you can try to, when you do your full range of motion lifting, to carry through with it and make sure that you complete the reps with the bar and your body in the optimal position all the way through the lift. And that will carry over to your raw lifting. Obviously, raw lifting is about generating power out of the bottom, but if you can keep the leverage as ideal and train yourself and use tools like that to find your perfect bar path through the entire lift, 
it may very well carry over to your one rec max because as long as you can get the weight started out of the bottom on the raw lift and you can maintain those leverages you'll never miss a lockout in addition to the other factor board partials do become interesting is that they can build a lot of support structure and i think it's one of the reasons jamie lewis uses them is simply because they can build your core and your entire support musculature up to such a dramatic degree that it will help your stability on your full range of motion lifts. So there is something to be said for doing accessory work this way. And I'm, this doesn't apply to novices. Novices shouldn't be messing with particles at all. They need to focus on getting strong out of the bottom and strong overall. This is more of an advanced tool. And I just thought it was interesting, guys. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh, Mount Bicephus.